Okay, in this part of the tutorial, uh, we are going to make the ball collide with bricks from our map. Uh, and when it hits them, we're going to delete them from the, uh, from the display. So, uh, let's get right to it. Okay, we already have a ball rectangle that's been created and that we can get at with this um, uh, rectangle get rect method under ball and paddle. So over in the game panel class, we actually don't need to do the same thing for the map. We're going to just edit the check collisions method. Now, to check collisions with the map, remember it's just a series of integers that we have coordinated with space by using these offsets, so horizontal padding and vertical padding, by using brick height and brick width, and so we calculate those two things. So we have these this math, and uh, I'll kind of let you sort it out, but it's, it's fairly easy basically to calculate the particular location of any given brick. We just use brick width and brick height in combination with horizontal padding and vertical padding to calculate the x and y coordinates that should be represented in the rectangle, or that should define where the rectangle is, and then we just use brick height and brick width to define the other part of the rectangle. So we're going to do that right now. So and uh, so we're going to say 4 and row equals 0. So we want to go through every part of the map. Oh, right, and we need to get the map. Do we? Yeah, we need to get the map. So we need to get the actual integer thing. Before we start doing that, let's just public uh, int. We need to grab the actual uh, integer array from the map. Get map array. And all this needs to do is return the map, which is a 2D array of integers. <sighs> is that right? Yes. And then we need to we need one more method called public void set map or set brick. Yeah, set brick. And this is going to take an int row and an int column. Because when, when a brick is hit, we want to change its value from 1 to 0. Uh, so we set the map, uh, dot, or the map at row column should equal value, and we should also pass it a value. Um, yeah, int value. And so we'll pass it a value. And we should also have one more method to get at a brick, public int get brick value. And this we just need to send in a row and a column. Do we need to do this? I don't think we need to do this. If we need to do this, I'll do it later. Okay, so, um, so now we can get the map array from the map object, and we can set an individual brick in that map array. So let's go ahead and head back over to our game panel. So we're going to go th cycle through that. So we'll just start um, a new array called int 2d array called the map equals the map. Uh, let's do the map array equals the map object dot get map array. So now we have it from the map. We just ask the map to give us the data of the current location of any active bricks. And so now we want to say row goes until it is less than, no longer less than the map dot length. Oh, the map array dot length row plus plus. And we need to go through the columns for int column equals zero. Column should go until it is no longer less than the map array row zero dot length and column plus plus. Now we need to calculate these x and y of the um, sorry of the of the bricks, each brick we need to look at individually. So every time through we're going to say um, brick, so we're going to create a new uh, variable brick x, int brick y, oops, sorry, brick y, we're going to have int 
brick width. Int brick height. And I forgot we need to be able to access brick width and brick height. So we'll head back over to the map and create those methods. So public uh, int get uh, brick width doesn't take any parameters and it just returns brick width public int get brick height doesn't take any parameters and it just returns brick height uh, and then we head back over to our collision thing we say brick x the x coordinate the top left coordinate of the brick should be the column number from the loop times the map dot get brick at brick width plus the horizontal offset so the map dot or pad okay so that generates the x coordinate of this rectangle and then for, for the y coordinate we say brick y should equal row times the map dot get brick height plus the map dot vert padding. Brick width should just equal the map dot get brick width and brick height should equal the map dot get brick height. Now we have enough information to build a rectangle against which we can check the ball rectangle. So rectangle brick rect equals new rectangle and where do we want this rectangle to be in space brick x brick y brick width brick height and now all we need to do is say if all rect dot intersects brick rect we want to do some stuff so we say what do we want to do well we want to uh, set the value of the integer at brick rect to our empty space one which is zero so the map dot set brick at row column and zero because it just got hit so we say no longer exists for the purposes of collision or drawing and then we want to also the ball dot uh, set I think we're just gonna do dy set dy negative the ball dot get dy it's not gonna ricochet is it gonna ricochet on the x direction should it yeah we're gonna so should we flip it I can't remember exact uh, Let's just see what this does. I think that this should work at this point. It like kind of works. So what is it doing? What am I forgetting? <laughs> it's like kind of working, but kind of wonky. So I got to fix that, obviously. Okay, uh, the next video I'll fix it.